Metrix provides a modular and field configurable device that is perfect for monitoring reciprocating compressors efficiently and economically. You can expand the system on throw by throw basis. Metrix is the biggest supplier of monitoring systems for non API 618 reciprocating compressors in the world. Our suite of vibration sensors includes the ST5484E velocity transmitters monitoring crankcase vibration, the IT6810 transmitters monitoring impact at the crossheads, and the MX2034 proximity transmitters monitoring average rod position at each of the piston rods. This sensor suite has served our customers well. Metrix is announcing the 5580 signal conditioner and the SW5580 switch that improves the way we monitor reciprocating compressors. The only difference between the 5580 signal conditioner and the SW5580 switch is the switch has two relays on each channel, either solid state or electromechanical contacts. The 5580 and the SW5580 are two channel devices. This gives us the ability to look at two inputs and get two outputs, or to use one input and get two outputs. For simplicity, we will use the SW5580, knowing that the 5580 can do the same thing with the exception of the relays. Let me explain. Instead of two ST5484Es at each end of the reciprocating compressor, we install two SA6200A accelerometers. Both of these crankcase monitoring accelerometers will be inputs into one SW5580. The SW5580 will convert the raw acceleration signal into a useful integrated velocity 4 to 20 milliamp signal and will use a unity gain amplifier to send the raw signal to a monitor or patch panel up to 300 meters away. The next part of the sensor suite is to replace each of the IT6810 impact transmitters installed on each crosshead with an SA6200A accelerometer on each crosshead. With the SW5580, we can measure two acceleration inputs and get two acceleration outputs or two impact outputs. We can also take in one acceleration input and get out one acceleration output from channel one and one impact output from channel two. We call this a dual path mode. The SW5580 will display the four to 20 milliamp signal and the raw acceleration signal output on channel one. It will also employ a unity gain amplifier to send the raw signal to a monitor or patch panel up to 300 meters away. In channel two, which is set up for impact, it displays the 4 to 20 milliamp output for impacts and the number of impacts measured. By using an accelerometer on the crosshead, you can measure both acceleration on channel 1 and impact on channel 2. Using the SW5580 software, you can set up an acceleration signal to monitor impact. This is easily done by configuring the channel for acceleration and then selecting Enable in the software. With the machine running, select Get on the software. This will pull the baseline impact information in millivolts from the accelerometer. For this example, it is 145 millivolts. You then select the threshold for impacts. A rule of thumb is two times the baseline level. In this case, we will use 290 millivolts. Then, you insert the machine speed in revolutions per minute. In this case, we will use 900 RPM. Notice the reset time is automatically set by the software to measure impacts within 16 revolutions of the machine. In this case, 1.1 seconds. After the send button is clicked on the software, the SW5580 will start measuring impact on channel two. The third part of the sensor suite has historically been the MX2034 proximity transmitter observing average rod position. With an SW5580, you can observe average rod position or use rod drop functionality to observe rider band wear using an MX2033 proximity driver. In a dual path mode, you can take in one MX2033 proximity driver input and observe rod drop on channel one and observe rod vibration on channel two. In the SW5580 software, you can change a rod position measurement to a rod drop measurement by using similar triangles to extend the rod position measurement to the rider bands. This is done simply by inputting the values for L1 and L2. 
L1 is the distance from the wrist pin to the proximity probe measurement at top dead center, and L2 is the distance from the wrist pin to the center of the piston. For this example, L1 is 50 inches and L2 is 100 inches. We can also do the same thing with metric units. For the MX2033 proximity driver, to set 0 or 12 milliamps from the SW5580 for the rider band measurement, you insert the gap voltage of the wrong position measurement. For this example, we will use minus 9 volts DC. You can see that there are now 0 mils of rider band wear. If you already have 10 mils of rider band wear, you can insert minus 10 volts DC and the system will calculate 10 mils of wear. The minus 1 volts DC change is 5 mils at the proximity probe measurement, but multiplied by the L2 L1 ratio of 2, showing 10 mils of wear at the rider bands. You should also note that the 4 to 20 milliamp signal is no longer 12 milliamps, but now is 14 milliamps, and the display also shows 10 mils. With one MX2033 proximity driver input into channel 1, we can get two outputs. On channel 1, we have rod drop, and on channel 2, we have rod vibration, showing in mils peak to peak. For this example, we are showing 17 mils peak to peak. We have discussed how Metrics has improved reciprocating machine monitoring by providing more value with the same number of vibration sensors. The 5580 and SW5580 give you the opportunity to monitor crankcase faults using the accelerometers integrated to velocity on the crankcase, looseness in each throw by monitoring acceleration and impact at the crosshead, and rod vibration and rider band wear using rod drop proximity sensors. Metrix provides a modular and field configurable device that is perfect for monitoring reciprocating compressors efficiently and economically. Please contact Metrix. We look forward to hearing from you.